Hey, welcome back to Big Whiskey Rebellion. I'm Mac McCormick, and we have a panel of guests who are now going to introduce themselves today, and they're going to get to in enjoy the world of tequila and mezcal. We're going to explain the differences between all of those. Hi, my name is Nick. I'm the majority bartender at one of Mac's other locations. I'm Beth Hobbs, and I'm the mother of one of the <laughs> men that work at McCormick's Whiskey. We are really pushing for guests today. <laughs> uh, Trey Martin, local patron and general ne'er do well. So. Uh, for those of you that are home, you, you probably don't know this, but we film in the morning because we're open at night, and I am starting them all off in the morning with five different types of tequila and mezcal because everybody should have that for breakfast. Uh, today we're going to really discuss some of the differences. There's a lot of questions about these things, like what they are, and I can't tell you how many times as a bartender I've had people say, I don't really uh, like brown tequila or, or I only like white tequila and I explained to them that it's all the same stuff it's just about aging and they don't actually know that and so today's show is to try to talk about what happens by using barrels to tequila but we're going to start with mezcal uh this particular mezcal is really nice it's got a, a, a very like fruity sweet smoky quality to it mezcals are different than tequilas because they actually fire roast the uh agave to get the agave nectar for distillation and uh that's kind of the big differentiation between tequila and mezcal. Most tequilas are oven roasted agave plants and that way the sugars don't take on the smoky quality as much as the fire roasting ones. But we're going to start trying those and then you guys get to tell us what you think about them. So we are going to go with the uh, Del Maguey Vita. I always forget the name of this. Uh, Vita de Muerte. Thank you very much. So we're going to have to do a huge amount of each of these. Fife and death. This is not. No, it's the life of. I don't know. Can already smell the smoke. It smells here. like wow. Winter. What was that? Tiger blood. Yeah. It's like I always get this creaminess. Like this one to me has kind of like this creamy, smoky quality. I, I can just smell the charcoal in it. Actually, what this nose reminds me of is if you took like a white grape juice and smoked it. I don't know, just on the smell, I haven't tasted it yet. But I, you know how white grape juice has that like bright nose? It does have a brightness and I'm not sure the white grape is the right way to describe it, but it's definitely something that has that kind of a smell. Well, it's, it's yeah, acidic, bright. Now on the palate, the smoke is very upfront. And uh, I don't usually do this, but off camera, we have Micah who hates smoky stuff. So we're gonna let him try that. It is very smoky. Too. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Pretty wild. Yeah, it's, it's good. good. Actually, it'll kind of look like the viewers are trying it now. <laughs> <laughs> Drink up, y'all. So main differentiation between tequilas and mezcals are kind of that smokiness. Um, other than that, there's so many different types of mezcal out there. I just happened to pick one that we had on the shelf here. We have quite a few mezcals. Some of them are very aggressive in flavor and I didn't want to pick a super aggressive one. Uh, but I like this one a lot. It makes really nice cocktails. Uh, not something I would want to take shots of necessarily. That was kind of my first thought. I was like, this is more of a, a cocktail yeah. type of thing. It's, uh, it's, it's really beautiful. And so we're going to go on to a Blanco tequila. Um, the same, uh, the qualities between both of these that are similar and why we're talking about things on this show like this today are there is no aging uh, of either of these products. And usually the aging is an ex bourbon cask or an ex scotch cask. And that's where things kind of get better in my opinion, um, is that aging. But I just wanted to start you guys off with Blanco stuff. And Nick is obviously very well versed with all of these things. And I know Beth hates drinking. So <laughs> totally. <laughs> Trey just hates anything that's not beer. Um, I just can't stop thinking about how good that beat is. It is really, it's, it's, it's pretty smooth. Uh, that's got a, a lot of good going for it. All right, so Milagro Blanco. I really like this tequila. Um, when it first was introduced to the US market, we started carrying it at my pub about, I think it was about 12 or 13 years ago and it just kind of blew me away at how tasty it was. And for the price, you, it's a great price bottle. But no smoke on the nose on this one. None. Right agave. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's very much something I would drink at home. Yeah, much fruitier. Uh, if, I don't know that I can describe what fruitiness. Yeah. We're gonna have some really shaky shots later. <laughs> um, 
But uh, I, I really like Milagro's products. No smoke in that. I still am tasting the smoke from the Vita, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here's where things change. After a Blanco, if you take that Blanco tequila and put it into a barrel, you end up with several different kind of aging statements. This would be a Reposado version of that same tequila. Uh, this is their kind of premium, their hand selecting which ones have a better quality. But typically Reposado tequilas are aged between six months and a year. Uh, and they start taking on some of those caramel notes that you would get from uh, a whiskey barrel. And it, as it's evaporating in those barrels, it's very hot in Mexico, so there's a lot of evaporation going on during the aging process. They get sweeter and richer. And uh, I tend to like the better aged tequilas. But a Reposado is a really nice start. And you can see a pretty dramatic difference from the Blanco to the Reposado. Yeah, the two are just... Well, the color's mm. all from the barrel. The, the, s the smell is much more... Yeah. Yeah, it's more appealing. And if I can smell it, it <laughs> has some smell. Trey, Trey teaches MMA and has had his nose broken about 127 times. Um, I it's it's really I good at it. Um, See, I that, like going to darker, darker ones. Well, yeah, I do too. That's kind of, And the point of this show is to show the, the changes that happen into the tequila yeah. or the mezcal and mezcals also have reposados and añejos so i just didn't think that they should have nine different things to try five is plenty i i, I think this is probably my favorite so far um yeah with these i kept getting this kind of minerally almost like blood thought back end to it this i don't get that yeah they yeah. they have more of a raw flavor okay um and and some people like that some people think they like that better because they don't actually understand the process of aging in tequilas yeah it, but uh i think this makes it much sweeter yeah. and this felt more like grain alcohol yeah. versus it, it kind of is yeah i mean not grain but what like you get yeah yes uh, whereas because of the barrels we're getting notes coming from the wood and again from the evaporation it's concentrating the flavors i think actually nick does a better job describing this th than i do this is vanilla and black pepper yeah at, it's you get that like light little bit of like if you if you were to take a bottle of vanilla extract and move it in front of your nose and just take it for a second like oh there's something kind of vanilla -y here yeah but you can taste the pepper for sure mm -hmm. the um you said these are not aged not aged at all here and the probably aged between six months and a year okay they don't put age statements on these things but typically reposado is under a year sometimes they go a little bit over the next one is uh really special and it's really funny because you know how everybody has that, that one thing that they can't drink and they they had a really bad experience? On my 23rd birthday, my friends thought it'd be really funny to make me drink 23 shots of Cuervo Gold. Oh. Um, it wasn't for a couple of years, I, actually probably like seven or eight years before I even tried tequila again. And I wasn't really digging them because it had that reflex of uh, reaction to it. And then I tried this. And ironically, it's another Cuervo product. This is definitely an extra i would almost say extra extra añejo tequila this has been hyper aged i want to say five or six years they do that on this particular one i i read once i it was sick but i don't know if they changed it but this is an amazing tequila and it really does kind of remind me of a whiskey when you taste it um specifically i get notes of japanese whiskey in this particular tequila and uh it's a pretty special one it's a little more expensive it's about a $200 bottle in Virginia. And uh, if I was to pick a tequila that I would drink all the time, this would probably be in my top five. It smells more like candy than it does tequila. Yeah, I guess the artificial sweetness that yeah. immediately yeah. pops you in the nose. Very sugary. Oh yeah, this is a like good. that. Yeah. Very sweet. Yeah. Um, but this is, it's delicious. We're not going to let Mike have any of this because we're going to finish these ourselves. Yeah. Sure. No, I think we should taste this one as well. Yeah, there's a kind of this is a, what I refer yeah. to as that multi uh, Coca-Cola thing mm -hmm. a little bit. I can see that. Yeah. It, it really does have a dessert quality. It's kind of like a flat Dr. Pepper. That, and, it's, that's, and it's sweeter than yeah. all the other ones. Uh, yeah. I, I think that might be a brand new taste. Of that. Yeah. Black Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper. Yeah, so we're going to create a trend. Um, I think if you like the idea of calling anything Fat Dr. Pepper, you should hit the like button right now. Yeah. We need some of those. Yeah. Uh, if you don't, comment, say we don't like that one, Nick. Yeah. Um, just kidding. Nick's a really great guy. Please don't say that. All right. So you've kind of run the gamut of aging. This is, I think, a relatively new category of aging. I never saw 
Cristalino type tequilas until the last, say, four years. And what Cristalino tequilas are is they age a tequila, it's usually an Añejo style tequila, and then they charcoal filter the color out of the tequila. And what happens is it leaves you some of the woody qualities, but it also ramps up the sweet notes and the fruity notes. And so I, uh, at first, didn't understand Cristalino tequilas, and I was like, is that a fancy way of saying Blanco? And then I tried it, I was like, this is a really aged tequila, it's so weird. But I really like Cristalinos. I think they're really beautiful. Um, I think some people use them for cocktails. I think they're too good for cocktails, but to each their own. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks like it should go into a cocktail, but but then the, the notes and the taste are so much better than what should be in a cocktail, in my opinion. Um, I like the smell. The smell is good. It's so clean. Mm -hmm. It is. Almost like I can't. I can just oh, barely. This is my super favorite. Yeah. Cristalinos are, are, are hard not to love because you get you get all of the, like the alcohol pulls in all of the dissolved wood sugar. Mm -hmm. And then when they filter it, it removes all the wood bitterness, all of the, you know, the, the extra things that come from the barrel char that would make it harsh. And you just get the sweetness with the agave. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And of the five, this is the one that reminds me of whiskey the most. Um, it really does have the finish that you would get from a whiskey. Oh. But this is like sweet and caramel and... That's why they do the yeah. preparation to focus more on the sweet notes. To get rid of the... Yeah. And to kind of get rid of the tannic wood notes. Okay, so now I know which one I'll order. I mean, crystallinas are... You can't find them everywhere, but they are very good. And they're pretty expensive usually, so... Eh, whatever. Well, you've always had expensive tastes. <laughs> This is probably where Brian gets his. Life is too short to drink bad spirit as far as right, exactly. it really it is. Trey's just like, you guys can just all pour these into my glass. Well, it's, yeah, you know, I'm kind of. Yeah, keeping you know, it. It would be a, if I was ordering, it would probably be. No, no. never, never. No, th this would probably be a no. This would be like a cocktail mix. Yeah. Um, and this is exactly how you pour sure. them. Um, I would drink this. I really like this. Oh, and yeah. I would drink that. So the thing that uh, I think really shines in the smoky mezcal products are uh, a, a cocktails, specifically something maybe like a spicy habanero margarita or something along yeah. that line. So something kind of magical that happens when you mix that smoke along with some sweet and some spice. Right. And so I, it, it's all in how you drink it. I've, I would never in my life go, hey, let me have a shot of the Vita because that's just too much for my palate. But then again, there's people who really seek out just the high low whiskeys that are super smoky and peaty. Also, not necessarily my go to. Yeah. I can appreciate them. I married one of those people. And yeah. yeah. A fun experience, though, is, is mezcal and meats because mezcal is, is so clean. Mm. Um, it can really impart that smoke note to cooked meat. And so I always encourage anyone to try like mezcal next to a smoke, to a, to a good cut of steak or something because they pair each other very well. I agree with that. Actually, I had the Crayanta uh, Reposado Mezcal with a burger once, and that was a really good combination. It's, it's, it's not something that you're expecting. You're like, oh, this really does go together. Yeah. Well, cheers, guys. Thanks so much, and thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. If you like our videos, please uh, share them with your friends and uh, subscribe if you haven't. And don't forget, we put out a new video every Sunday, so if you subscribe, you'll get notified, and you can catch us every week. Thank you very much.